We glorify you, Lord. We honor you, Father, for being so good to us, Lord God, because the enemy, he comes to kill, steal, and destroy. He has been plotting and planning, destroying us, destroying our children, destroying our legacy, the future that we have with you in eternity. Father, but I thank you so much today that you turned it around, Father. You are truly the God of reversals. <laughs> you switch things up, Father God, and we just thank you for it. I thank you for being with us tonight. I pray that you would speak to us and speak through us. I pray that you would um, minister to our hearts in these places, Father, where we have allowed doubt to overcome us. Yeah where we cannot see a positive outcome. Matter of fact, not just a positive outcome. We don't have any clue about your perspective on our outcome. So Father, we pray that you would give us insight. You would give us wisdom and foresight through the scriptures, that you would teach us, Lord God, through the life of Esther and Mordecai and the Jews, Lord God, um, of, of old, Father God, what it is we're supposed to do. How, how should we look at things and what we should, how we should walk things out. We thank you so much. We give you glory, honor, and praise. In the name of Yeshua, we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hey, ladies. Amen. How's it going? Hey. Stephanie, the only one that's going great? Doing good. Come doing on, y'all better get used to clicking <laughs> the mute buttons off. Hallelujah. It's going doing well. good. It's doing good. I got my, these kids won't be quiet. Come but on now. Well. Come on, tell them to make a joyful noise. Hallelujah. Look, we're going to celebrate Jesus because he is good and he's good to me. Is he good to you? Yes. He's good to me all the time. He is good to me. He's good to me. I am so, so grateful for this Tuesday. Y'all, I had to fight because I was tired. I was like, Lord, just please let me get to Bible study. Please, Lord. But I'm grateful that I'm here. There is power in being together. There's power in community. There's power in sisterhood. And not just any sisterhood, but healthy kingdom sisterhood. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes. How many of y'all know we ain't got time for no foolishness? We don't do no chatty girl stuff. We do God no. stuff. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Glory to Hallelujah. God. So um, I want to share a couple of things with you guys. Um, we're going to do our declarations. Don't forget what's coming up July 28th, 29th, and 30th. The women's retreat. Who said that all like that? Who said that? The women's retreat. Yes, Stephanie. <laughs> Gotta be, <laughs> you be excited. <laughs> no, the women's retreat is coming up. So glad about that. God is really, <sighs> man, he's already working behind the scenes and um, the intercessors meet on Mondays, man, they are praying. We are praying. We are praying for each and every one of you. We're praying for the father's hand and the father is showing up already. And for that, we're grateful. And so I just believe, um, he's given us so much insight about what's going to take place in July. So I hope that you all are there and I hope that you're able to get your space um, and if whatever the will of the father is, it will happen. Hallelujah. We know it will because he's God. Amen. Amen. Um, let me see here. Um, oh, also about that. I don't want to forget to tell you when you do go register, there's two registrations. There's one for the retreat, but there's also our Oil of Myrrh Spa, which is going to be done by Reva. She's going to be one of our um, beautiful spa technicians there. Or is that the right term, Reva? I don't know. She probably with the kids, but I think um, it is going to be phenomenal because I've had some of Reva's work and oh my gosh, she's amazing. Wow. Um, her with um, some other ladies will be service serving us in that way of relaxation. So don't forget to sign up for that. Um, they're going to be doing neck massages, hand massages, and head massages. Um, wow. We know we're going to need that. We need our minds yeah. right. So they're going to do our hands. We need our bodies <laughs> right. And we need our hands to be right so we can keep fighting. All right. Hallelujah. So don't forget okay. to do that. Okay. Let me share my screen. Did I do that? I share my screen, right? Y'all can see my screen, right? Yes. 
All right. So where is my stuff for Bible study? I think I think my husband came on my computer and he closed all of my things. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. Because I was trying to get him to help me tonight with downloading the video. And he helped me, but then I feel out of salts. One second, guys. Hallelujah, hallelujah. All right. Yeah, I think he closed all my things. Oh, wonderful husband, thank you. I apologize because my computer is slow. All right, can you guys see that? All right, as always, we say our declarations. It's super important to me because I have realized and found out in my time of just serving and teaching and being in leadership, I don't care how much you tell people that God is real and he speaks to us. There are certain things that still happen in the human mind and the human heart, and the enemy is a deceiver. And so we, we say these declarations. Um, because it's important for you to declare over yourself, over your mind, over your emotions, your spirit, that I am here to gain everything that God has for me. And I want the best of what God has for me. And I refuse to let my attitude or my offense or my um, the spirit of condemnation to come upon me when I know that God loves me and everything that he's giving to me is because he loves me. Um, this is a safe space and we always um, share and love on each other because we wanna see each other strong in the faith. We wanna see each other um, most of all in eternity um, in the life to come. And so we are striving for that. So I ask that you read along with me um, as I read um, our declarations. Lord, I pray that the word today would find good soil in my heart. Sorry about that. I reject the thoughts of offense. When the light of your word exposes my sin. I do not take offense. I will change and turn to you, my heavenly father. Amen. Don't y'all know that devil will try to get you offended with the word of God? Hallelujah. I that condemnation, your word says that Jesus did not come to condemn people. This word does not come to condemn me, but it comes to heal me. I reject accusations. Satan is the accuser of brothers and sisters. And this word does not come to accuse me or abuse me. This word exposes Satan and his lies. And I choose to believe and receive the truth. God says in his word, blessed are my eyes and my ears for they hear for many prophets and righteous men desire to see what I see and did not see it and to hear what I hear and did not hear it. Therefore, I will hide your word in my heart that I might not sin against God. Hallelujah. Open my Open eyes that I may see wondrous things from your word. word. Okay. Yeah. Hallelujah. Bless his holy name. All right. Who can tell me? So we've been talking about Esther, and I'm so excited because guess what? We're almost through the book of Esther. Woo, two yeah. books down, y'all. We are doing this. We are doing this. And I'm so excited for all of you where this may be your first time reading through the scriptures or your first time ever reading a chapter in the Bible. Hallelujah, you did it. And that's a big deal because the enemy wants to distract us and throw us off and cause us to be uncommitted and cause us to drop the ball. But God has been with us and um, together we can do anything. We can literally do anything. So what we've done is read two chapters. We read Ruth. And some of you, because it's, you're just beginning with us, you've read Esther. So um, we are on the last two chapters. I know that Reva sent out chapter nine, but we're going to do chapter nine and 10 because 10 is super short. And we're going to um, close that out, this book out tonight. Um, how many of you have enjoyed the book of Esther? Oh, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. All right. So let's talk about it. 
What happened last week? Tell me, chapter eight, somebody give us, or, or a few of you, give us a review of chapter eight before we go into chapter nine. Bring us up to date with what's going on. We gonna talk tonight, come on. Woo! Stephanie, don't be ashamed. You can talk, girl. You always talk and I love it. You get us started. You get us started. That's awesome. Uh, um, one thing that stuck out to me in chapter eight was uh, how Esther interceded on behalf of her people um, and just pleaded for, for them. Um, and I love the part where um, is it, you know, she fell at, at his feet and then the king extended that um, gold scepter to yeah. her. Um, and then the tie in to because of Jesus, we don't need that golden gold scepter to be extended to us because yeah. so I love that part that is like um, that we can go directly to the king, right? Yes. yes. We can go directly to the king. That's awesome. I love that. Yeah. And the other part I liked was um just how the edict or whatever you want to call it was written so personal to each person, like in their own script, in their own language, to each yep. per like so they all put like I love those, the personalization of it. And then that's really good because God is that way with us, right? He has given yeah. um, he has provided a way for everyone to understand who he is through his son, Jesus. He has provided that way. And he's also opened up the door. Man, that's incredible. He's also opened up the door for each and every one of us to come directly to him and to have a personal relationship with him, no matter what's our background, what's our likes and dislikes, no matter where we, where, how we grew up, what's our customs, it does not matter. And that's a beautiful observation. Beautiful observation. All right, anybody else? Come on, Reva, you turn your camera on so you can tell us. Come on, girl. You on mute. <laughs> you still cute. Don't worry about it. <laughs> no, I didn't. I didn't do that. Um, girl, I'm not going to lie. I can't even remember. But um, based on um, Just what, give us what you've gotten from Esther thus far, we've read eight okay. chapters. That's fine. Oh, OK. Um, so definitely, um, I would say Esther's, um, her character for sure. Um, just, you know, as a kingdom woman, um, I definitely strive to be more like her, um, patient, you know, God fearing, um, you know, willing to turn her plate down. Um, and just kind of step by step and like walk that thing out, not knowing what, you know, was going to happen, not, not knowing what was in front of them or behind them or, you know, um, I think she, she definitely saw that, um, whatever sacrifices they made, it came, you know what I mean? Like God, God favored them, um, um, I'm sure Mordecai was like, Oh Lord Jesus, like, thank God. You know what I mean? Like he was then the, the, you know, the King's right hand man or whatever after all. Um, so yeah, definitely a good book. Oh my gosh. Yeah, that's good. Sorry. I think too, that I think too, going with the connecting what you just said with what Stephanie said is it teaches us about the level of humility we need to have in approaching God and his yes. throne. Like she, you think about, they gave us the, 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 um, opposite first. They gave us, um, Vashti, who was very kind of uppity and arrogant. She yep. was like, I am the queen. Like, I know you the king, but I'm the queen. So I ain't gotta no, show up. <laughs> I'm doing my own thing. Okay. Yeah. You're not going to interrupt what I'm doing to come to what you're doing. And yeah. Esther comes on the scene and she gives us women a direct opposite of that where it didn't matter what was going on with her. She, although she was the queen, she had power. And especially after the first time, the the king's like, hey, you could do whatever, like whatever you want. Right. What, yeah, whatever. Up to half oh, of the kingdom, but it did not change her posture. She still was humble. No. She still approached him 
with a bowing head, kind of like, hey, you know, King, if it, if it honors you. Yeah. And I think that statement alone is so powerful. Like us approaching God's throne, like God, if it honors you, would you please? Yeah. Man, that's that's awesome. Like, yep. that's a lesson in itself because some of us go to God like he owes us something. Right. We go to God like, God, you know what? You said you was going to do this and you need to do this. You know, there's a whole group of people who are teaching, you got to command God. I can't command God. Right. So what that he says, I'm joint heirs with Jesus. I cannot command him. I must humble myself. God responds to humility. And Esther shows us that. And I think it's so beautiful. Anyone else? Deanna, come on, baby. What you get? Talk to me. Teach us tonight. What, what did you get from, from the book of Esther, um, chapter eight or one through eight or Layla? Um, trusting, uh, kind of the same, just being humble and also like trusting God, trusting the process, especially between her, like with um, like with, with her cousin, just yeah. the whole thing, like with everything that was happening. Um, mm -hmm. but that's That's the biggest thing that I got from it. That's awesome. I, I want to tell y'all, y'all make my heart so glad because some of you have really opened up and started sharing in Bible study. And I think it's really, really awesome. So thank you guys for doing that. Thank you for just talking and sharing and letting us know what God speaks to you from your perspective, because it means a lot and it helps all of us to grow. So thank you for that. Yes. yes. Um, Layla, you got anything you want to add, share? Lucia, you got anything you want to share? I know you were Hi. only here a couple weeks, but yeah, go ahead, baby. Sorry, I have my fan running loudly in the background, so I'm sorry. If, um, we if can't, can't hear it. it. Don't worry about oh, it. We hear okay, <laughs> okay, good. Um, I guess what I learned was just like kind of obeying God, even when it doesn't really make sense. Ooh. Just like if something is like placed heavy on your heart, just like listen to it and obey it, even if it doesn't make sense right now, even if you are terrified or scared of it, just do it. Oh. Um, that's really what I've learned. And I'm trying to practice that currently. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's a good lesson right there. Yes. <laughs> you got me excited, Layla, because I'm like, you on my street. You on my street. Like, Talk <laughs> some more. Talk some more. <laughs> because it so, is scary. Go ahead. So I didn't get a chance to, I didn't know about reading Esther. So I didn't, I didn't read it. I'm currently at work right now trying to catch up. Um, but just listening to everyone, you know, get their um, snippets in about the scripture, um, how it resonates to me, even without reading the trap, um, the chapter or the scripture at this moment. I just feel like as a as a human being and doing this walk through Christ and our journey, we have to learn to be able to be in uncomfortable positions as well as that knowing that in that moment, we also have to humble ourselves. So I feel like when it comes to different trials and tribulations and things that we pray for, it's all about how we manifest what we want as well in prayer and worshiping, as well as staying committed to our truth by, you know, leaning on, leaning not on our own understanding, but on God's understanding and, and, and casting all our cares to him and just showing him that Lord, I don't know what tomorrow or next week is going to bring. This is my current situation. I bring this to to the altar for you to handle. I'm I'm giving you my my load and I trust you and know that in in all my ways you will order my steps and I'm trusting you with my life and I'm asking you to have your way in my life. Um and help me to uh, help me to um be in a position where I am, you know, listening not to respond that I'm humbling myself and I'm not letting the worldly things or things from you know work school family um you know distract me and lure me into those negative thoughts and negative things um and just just overall just trusting God in each and every situation and just learning how to be uh, in be okay in those uncomfortable situations 
Yeah, yes. Um, Esther is all about that, like being in an uncomfortable situation and not so much. Um, you said something that I thought it stood out to me about um, really manifesting what it is that you want. Um, we can't do that. Mm -hmm. You can want something, but if it's not God's will, it ain't happening. Right. And I'm, I'm really, I, I'm really like, that's really important to me because we are in a society and a time where everybody they're saying that, like, I can manifest this, I can make it happen. But what Esther teaches us is no, I go before the King because he has the answer. And as he gives us the answer and he gives us the instruction, even sometimes when it's not like, like some people make it like God says this big loud voice to us or it's a dream or whatever. No, she just did what was in front of her, which is what you articulated. Like, hey, every day, just do what's in front of you. And if I can trust God for that next step of what's in front of me, he will guide me to that place where I need to be. Yeah. Sometimes it's not eating the whole pie, so to speak. It's one thing at a time. God, what is it you want me to do right now today? Okay, you got me at work today, God. What is it you want me to do at work? Let me do that and let me honor you in that. Let me work as though I'm doing it for you, God. I'm doing it unto you. And it's through those actions and through those different exercises that the things that we are praying for are answered. Right. It's through being obedient in those little spaces, so to speak, that God honors us in the bigger things. And I think that's awesome. And yes, absolutely. Esther shows us that and, and she demonstrate that, that demonstrates that before us. So hallelujah. Thank you guys for that. That's really awesome. Um, that's really awesome. I missed some of Bible study last week and uh, Carlette Smith stood in and... Um, did an awesome, awesome job. I caught the very end of it. Um, so that's pretty good. Good catch up. Thank you for that. So I was reading tonight. Um, Y'all know I told you I have the Tony A. Evans study Bible, which I am in love with. It's actually my husband's, but <laughs> I took it. Um, we won, not two, we won. So I took it too. Um, but one of the, the little write-ups, I love at the bottom how it gives the summary of the scriptures. And he says some really awesome things. So I'm going to read a little bit of that from chapter eight, because I thought it was really important leading up to chapters nine and 10. And then I'm going to put the scriptures up. If you guys are willing and able to read, please volunteer to read. And we will read through the scriptures and then you can share um, your insight, we'll kind of discuss it. And I'll give you some insights that the Holy Spirit showed me as I've been reading it and things that popped out um, in my spirit to challenge us and to um, encourage us in the word of God. So hallelujah. Um, the Lord is God of reversals. <laughs> He's the God of reversals. And I've seen this in my life, like what looked to be crazy Within seconds, God will flip that thing around. He just did that the other day for me, like just flipped it around. I was like, "Woo, that was fast. Um, God is the God of reversals. It's very important that we do not, when we're going through different situations, that we don't make a verdict on the situation before God says what it is. And sometimes we do that, right? We, we're in the midst of something and we will declare and speak it out that there is something not favorable getting ready to happen. And we haven't even given, we haven't even taken it to God. We're just going on our short sightedness. And so um, I want to encourage you that God is the God of reversals. Like it doesn't matter what it looks like. He has the final say. Some of you need to say that over yourself. God has the final say in my situation. Hallelujah. Following Esther's in intervention, there came a financial reversal. Glory to God. Suddenly, everything that Haman owned belonged to the woman who had bravely called him out. I thought that was good. <laughs> this highlights the truth of Proverbs 13, 22. The sinner's wealth 
is stored up for the righteous. A lot of people quote that scripture, but this is what popped out to me about that. Esther came to a near death situation and then the wealth was transferred. She came to a near death situation. She had to fight for her life, stand up in her discomfort, turn down her plate. And then the transfer came when she stood in faith and, and just watched God work it out. I, I think that's really important. I, I, it sticks out to me because I think we go around and we quote that, but we quote it from our advantage. The wealth of the wicked is stored up for the righteous. But it's like, well, have you put yourself in a position for that transfer to happen? And I'm not saying like you went and I don't know, whatever, did whatever, but I'm talking about Looking at the example of Esther, she was obedient. She turned her plate down. She honored her elders. She just lived in such an awesome life um, from what we demonstrate. And I'm not trying to give the picture that she was perfect because she wasn't, as we already know, she wouldn't even reveal who she really was until the appointed time. And God used that. But I'm like, there was some steps she had to go through um, before she got to the wealth of the righteous, before everything that Haman had was turned over to her and his estate was given to her. Um, I'm like, man, am I willing to wait and go through everything I got to go through for that transfer to happen? This is a question I've really been pondering lately. And I'm like, I've come too far to turn back now. I'm going to stick in this thing, God. I got to see what you said. <laughs> I don't know about y'all, but I'm like, God, I got to see it. Like, I'm not about to turn away now. I'm going to stick in here. If I got to fast, I'm going to fast. And I'm going to do it with delight. If I got to serve, I'm going to serve. And I'm going to do it excitedly. I am going to honor you, God, with my whole life. And I'm not honoring you so that I can get things. I'm honoring you because you're my dad and I love you. And I understand that your promises are true. And if I honor you, God, you've already told me what the insurance plan is, that everything that my enemy has tried to do to me, you're going to transfer what he has stored up and it will be mine. Hallelujah. Woo! That's some good news, y'all. That's some good news. All right. So it says, um, then there was a political reversal. So first there was a financial reversal. Then there was a political reversal as the authority that Haman once held was granted to his rival. Look, don't mess with God's people. Don't mess with God. <laughs> Haman literally lost everything. Everything. No matter how powerful the people and circumstances aligned against you may seem. Listen, they have nothing unless God grants it to them. Woo! I don't care. It don't matter who's threatening you. It doesn't matter what they have against you. They have nothing unless God gives it to them. That's a different level of comfort and rest in God. And if he grants it to them, he can take it away in an instant. Do y'all believe that? Yeah. The enemies that have come up against you. How many of y'all have like, you've had situations where you knew it was the enemy against you and he was threatening you to do harm to you and you were shook. Yeah. I'm talking about totally shook, crying, calling folk, praying. <laughs> because I gave all that power to the human. But God says, I got all power in my hand. Mm -hmm. I do. So when the enemy comes up against you next time, grow from that. Learn. Don't flinch. Why? Because you have the God of the universe standing with you, standing for you. And he's all, he has all say. 
He has all say. That doesn't mean that you walk around with arrogance, but it means that you walk around with confidence. <laughs> I'm confident that my God going to come through. I'm confident my God going to do this. I'm confident that the will of God is going to happen. Not what Siobhan wants to happen, but what he wants to happen. And when my heart is linked up with his heart, he gives me the desires of my heart. Mm -hmm. And that's when you see God working out things in your favor. He's preparing that table in the presence of your enemies. Miss Siobhan. Yes, honey. I'm so sorry to interrupt you, but you I have good? a question about that. How do you know... Like when something's placed on your heart, how do you know if it's from God? Cause like that's been sitting heavy on my heart. Like there's so many, not so many things that I desire, but there's certain things that I've been desiring lately. And I feel like it's from God. I feel like God has placed this on my heart to do it, to pursue it. But I just, I question it. I don't know why. <laughs> because we're human one, but mm -hmm. um, to answer your question, how do you know? Well, one, it'll line up with the word of God. God's never going to ask us to do anything that we that's not in his word, right? It's going to line up with truth. The second thing is you typically, in my experience, when God wants me to do something, that thing won't leave me. It won't fade. I don't care. It's not going to let me. God, through the Holy Spirit, will not allow me to rest until I submit to that. He ain't going to let me rest because it's something that he wants. And you'll feel that push. You'll feel that like, man, I don't, I don't know why I'm just, you'll feel that push until you step out there and do it. Yeah. That's exactly how I've been feeling. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. You'll feel that push. Um, the other thing is if it's God asking you to do it, he's going to meet you in the provisions to do it. That doesn't mean you're going to see all of the funds or all of the people or all of the resource, whatever you need to do what he's asking you to do. It doesn't mean you're going to see it all, but it does mean when you take that first step, God's going to meet you in that first step. Another way to confirm is God will send people to you. So as you read the word, he'll give you confirmation. Another way you'll know is sometimes he'll send people to you. And they'll say something or they'll speak to you about a certain thing, or he'll send someone to ask you to do something that's in the realm of what he's put, in, put on your heart to do. And that's how, you know, a lot of times, once you step out there and guess what, Layla, even say, say, for example, you feel like God told you to do something, but you're scared to do it. You have no idea if it's really him, you're not sure. Well, if it lines up in his word, right? And you step out there and do it and you're wrong. What do you think God's going to do? Um, protect me. That's it. He's going <laughs> to, he's going to come to you. He's going to say, whoa, Layla, that's not the word. That's not what I meant. <laughs> come, come back this way. Right. Come back this way. God is so great and so awesome. And I think sometimes we are so afraid um, to step out on those things that we feel are God-sized tasks. Is, um, we're so scared. But God, if he's the person that's calling you to it, he's going to walk you through that thing. He's going to guide you. He's not going to let you bust your head open. Right? When I, okay, so I'm going to give you an example of this. Um, and I hope it helps you. Um, probably, I'm going to go as far as to say five years ago, God gave me the title, Fit to be Loved Conference. And I was laying in my bed. I think I was getting ready to go to sleep. And it came to my mind. You're going to do a conference called Fit to be Loved. I was like, hmm. <laughs> <laughs> that was my response like no oh okay no so I start thinking about it and and I didn't even really do anything as far as like start you know because a lot of times when God tells us stuff we want to jump right out there and do it but sometimes God is he's giving sometimes he gives us a long runway right and he'll say do this so he gave me that title and I kind of set it on the shelf and and I I started doing 
um, the Spice Network for Women and I was having month, uh, monthly gatherings with women and I was doing little things there, but it, you know, no big deal. I was just meeting with women, I, you know, whatever. So I did that for some time and then I moved and I stopped doing Spice meetings. So I was like, well, God, you know what? You told me to do this women's thing, but I don't understand because now I moved. Now I can't do it and blah, 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 blah. Fast forward to this year, now five or more years. And every once in a while, I would just mention it. I would mention it to somebody, like somebody will say something. I'm like, man, I think God told me to do this women's conference, but I don't know. You know what I mean? Like I ain't got no place. I don't have a resource. Like, how am I going to do this? I don't know. I don't know. Couple... Um, months ago, when I started planning, probably towards the beginning of this year, it's almost like God was like, now do it. And I'm like, now you want me to do it now where I'm in transition, living in a hotel. You want to do it now after you just told me to leave my place. <laughs> God, you want me to do it now? <laughs> I don't have no money. God, you want me to do it now? Like, are you really meaning now? He's like, yep. And I want you to do this. And I want you to do this. Okay. 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 So one of the things too, that I've realized is God will ask you to do something when it's the most inconvenient time in your life. And he's going to ask you to do something that is seemingly very uncomfortable and sometimes not even you. I used to tell everybody, I'm like, I don't even like girls. <laughs> that was my joke because I grew up with all boys. Okay. I grew up with boys. My, I have all men in my house, including my dog. Okay. So I thought it was a nice joke of God to be like, you're now going to teach women. And I was like, no, because women are difficult. <laughs> and he was like, no, this is what you're going to do. And so my point is like, God took me through that process. And now here we are about to have this conference. And when I got ready to do it, Layla, you know what? God said, write the plan down. I said, okay. I was like, I don't even know where to start. He said, write the plan down. I wrote the plan down. By the time I finished with the plan, he said, now call this person. I called her. I was in obedience to that. I called her. When I called her, she basically ran down. Boom, this is what you need to do. I was just taking notes. I submitted to that. Boom, I got to do this. By the time I finished that, I had a location. I had um, the plan. I had like the food er, caterer, the chef in place, everything that God, I needed just from connecting to this one resource. It's not that she gave me the answers to everything, but my obedience opened the door for God to bring everything that I needed, if that makes sense. So I'm like, if you feel like God's telling you to do something, honey, step out there. Like you said, even if it's uncomfortable, Trust God in every step and just do what's in front of you. You don't even have to do anything sometimes out of source. Just do what's in front of you. And as you're doing that, God will bring the pieces together. That's my experience. I hope that helps you. Anybody yes. want to add anything? Thank you so much for sharing. Thank you. That really helped me. <laughs> no worries. Anybody else? I can definitely share? relate. I can relate to that. Um, I was at a job um, recently and um, over the course of the years, I kind of got so used to like sticking with what I know um, just because of my work history and just the things that I, I was going through mentally. Um, and um, at the time I was in the process of, you know, my lease ending up in my place and me having a plan, but not so much of a plan of what I'm going to really do. As mm -hmm. far as like, I knew I was going to move to a certain particular place temporarily, but I was like, what am I going to do with my job? Initially with that job, I had plans and discussion on my, um, my contract that I could go remote after 90 days that fell through. Um, and then everything else started like, you know, going downhill and then the enemy just started being busy. And in the midst of that, um, my friend had um, obtained a management position. Um, and over the course of the years, she would always say, hey, you know, won't you, you know, we used to work at a previous job together. She said, like, won't you come back here? But it just wasn't the right 
timing because of finances and me not having a car at the moment. I just like, it's just not going to work. It, it doesn't make sense for me to spend all that money to go to and from to get to work when, you know, I'm barely, you know, handling things right now. Um, and she, you know, brought up this proposition of like, hey, I, you know, I have this opening at my job. It's, you know, completely out of what you've been doing. Um, I mean, you do have, you know, skills of scheduling things of that nature, but this is like a different type of scheduling. And I sat there on the phone like, oh, my gosh, God, like, I don't know what to do. Like, I don't want to turn up this good offer. And without me even asking too much of anything, she just started like throwing stuff at my plate. The job comes with this. The job comes with that. You know, you could do this. Da da da. And God put on my spirit in that moment to say, do it take that leap of faith and I was able to just like in mid sentence of her telling me everything I said you know what I'm going to take you up on that and I'm going to take that leap of faith and try something different outside me I always wanted to do a little something different so I'm going to take that leap of faith and I was just like God I'm trusting you to equip me with whatever I need to be equipped with so that I can successfully um you know accomplish you know things at my job and learn you know some other new skill settings and things of that nature and since starting it's been an uh, quite of an enjoyment um ride but also frustrating at, at the same time because I have a lot of things coming my way and then you know with me transitioning from, out of my apartment to where I'm staying at temporarily it's just been overloads of stress and you know a lot of things come in my way and you know that's one of the reasons why I'm still here tonight and you know my friend who is my manager she's like you know you have to give yourself grace you have to be mindful that you know you have to be okay with being in a com uncomfortable situation while taking that leap of faith and knowing that God is going to provide everything you need going forward Mm -hmm. Everything that you need, he's going to provide it without a doubt. You just have to be consistent on your part and just keep that faith and stand on that. And any obstacles and things don't, that come your way, you have to uh, you have to attack it with the the the, the greater armor of God. Mm -hmm. And you have to remind yourself that this is not attack to deter you, but this is this is something more to like. Um, uphold you to who God has called you to be yep so you're going to climb up that ladder and deal with those uncomfortable things and people saying this and this is a third but you have to learn how to fight it with the good fight of faith yep yeah yeah that's good all right y'all let's let's um let me see so uh Okay, so the the just to finish reviewing that, um, Justice Haman had been given the authority to write orders to the king's name and seal them with the royal signet ring. So now Esther and Mordecai were authorized to do the same. So basically, everything was transferred to Esther and Mordecai, and God really gave them the victory in um, their their walk over their enemies. All right. Um, we come up to chapter nine and I'm going to put nine and 10 up here and we'll read through it. Um, you guys can, can you see my screen? Okay, guys. Yeah. I have put this in the message version because I thought it was very, very straightforward and I loved it. Um, let me see. I like the message version. Sometimes the message Bible though makes it so plain till it sometimes takes things a little bit out of context. So just keep that in mind uh, when you're reading the message version. Um, but for tonight, I'll, I'll read. Can I get someone to read one through four? I'll read one through four. Thank you. Can I get someone to read five through 12? I can read five through 12 just so I don't have to, y'all, I know y'all don't like to deal with all them names. 
<laughs> up to 12, 13 through um, 19. Can I get someone to read 13 through 19? I can. All right, perfect. Um, it's going to be a good amount of reading tonight. 20 through 26. Can I get someone to read 20 through 26? Steph, you reading already? Thank yep. you. Nope, I'll do it. Yep. Okay, perfect. And then I'll wrap back around. Um, I think Reva end up falling off. Her phone keeps going in and out. So I'll I'll wrap back around and then we can repeat because it's only like three more verses after that. All right, perfect. Okay. Here we go. One through four. Okay. On the 13th day of the 12th month, the month of Adar, the king's order came into effect. This was the very day that the enemies of the Jews had planned to overpower them. But the tables were now turned. The Jews overpowered those who hated them. The Jews had gathered in the cities throughout King Xerxes provinces to lay hands on those who were seeking their ruin. Not one man was able to stand up against them. Fear made cowards of all of them all. What's more, all the government officials, satraps, governors, everyone who worked for the king and my glasses <laughs> actually <laughs> helped <laughs> the Jews because of Mordecai. They were afraid of him. <clears throat> Mordecai by now was a power in the palace. As Mordecai became more and more powerful, his reputation had grown in all the provinces. Tell us what you're hearing there, Diana. <laughs> um, the G the Jews are fighting back. Like the Jews are are um. Yeah, standing up. Yeah, because the That's what I when 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 the king allowed Haman to write it down that edict, it cannot be reversed. Remember that, right? Yeah. So so what Esther ended up doing is requesting from the king, can we write another edict? So they end up mm -hmm. writing, it couldn't be modified. They had to write something else. And a part of her request was, can we fight back? Yeah. Can we defend ourselves and let the Jews defend themselves? And so the king said, yes. So the the king, the Jews come in. They were almost ready and prepared, armed. Woo, that's good. Yeah. It's not that they their enemy was what the king did not just wipe out the enemies for them. But he brought it to their awareness. Mm -hmm. they knew what was getting ready to happen and he allowed them to be equipped to fight the enemy are you ladies equipped or are you just sitting back waiting for somebody something else to happen no we gotta be equipped the enemy is real this really is that parallel of our spiritual life The fasting has happened. The praying has happened. The enemy, our, our in, enemy or initiator of our detriment has been dealt with, but he put something in place that had a trickle effect in our lives. How are you preparing to fight that? Woo, that's good. Like, come on, y'all. This is what we're doing. This is a part of preparation is knowing the word of God, knowing who you are in God's kingdom, knowing what God has put in place for you, knowing that the king will back you and stand up for you. That was the beauty. And all of this is unfolding in my mind. Thank you, Steph. It is the, it's, it's like, man, you just triggered like almost dominoes in my mind. Like, yo, this is, this is what the king does when we go and we humble ourselves before him. He says, what is it that you want? I will give it unto you, even up to half of my kingdom. The king is fighting for us. Yahweh is fighting for us. 
But there are some cases where he will just wipe the enemy out and cause him to stop. There's other places where he's like, I've taught your fingers to fight and your hands to war. You're going to have to fight and face the enemy. You're going to have to do what I taught you. I showed you how to deal with spiritual wickedness. I showed you how to break down principalities. I showed you how to address demonic spirits. You're going to have to do what I taught you. Well, God, I prayed. He says, this kind goes only through fasting and prayer. You can't just pray about this. You got to fast. He's given us the tools that we need to be successful in this life over our end enemy and the enemy of our souls. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So when the enemy showed up, the Jews were ready. Now, I think it's interesting because it seemed like in reading this, that the enemies weren't ready. It seems like they underestimated the power of the Jews. Mm -hmm. It seems like they underestimated what their capabilities were because of what we're going to read a little bit longer. The enemy, the Jews overpowered them. And right here it says, this was the very day that the enemies of the Jews had planned to overpower them, but the tables were now turned. Mm -hmm. So it's not just that they were prepared, it was also that their God stood up with them and they knew it. They didn't shrink back. <clears throat> the Jews overpowered those who hated them. That's so good. They gathered in the cities throughout King Xerxes' provinces to lay hands on those who were seeking their ruin. They didn't just stay in one place. They was all over the place, kicking people's behind pots. They was like, look, we taking y'all out. <laughs> they was taking them out. Yeah. And this the, um, not, huh? About, and the, um, at the end too, like with all the government officials, yeah, with Mordecai, everybody, I guess like, I guess like just he became powerful like Mordecai was yeah. I, I don't want to say in charge but like he was in know. charge yeah he was second in command he was second in command not one man was able to stand up against them they were so afraid that they cowered it to them then because everyone else was 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 um, on edge, they ended up helping Mordecai. The same people that were against him end up helping them. The Bible says that, that God will make our enemies our footstool. That's what he means by that. They will help you. Your enemy will help you. And they helped him because they were so scared of him. Now, did Morde Mordecai ever oppose, I mean, you know, like present a threat in any of the chapters before? No. So you just got to think like, what were you afraid of? God put fear in them. Mordecai by now was, was a power in the palace. And the more and more powerful that Mordecai became, his reputation had grown in all the provinces. Who made his name great? God. God made his name great. Do y'all know that if you honor God with your life and you obey him and you do what he's asking of you and you humble yourselves before him, the word of God says he will make your name great? Not just amongst your friends, but also amongst your enemies. This is what we're seeing right here. Hallelujah. Can y'all believe that? That the people that says that's standing against you right now, the entities that's standing against you, because we understand that we wrestle not against flesh and blood. We're not fighting people. The enemy will use any available tool. I don't care who it is. Your mom, your dad, your husband, your children, your friends, your boss. It don't matter. He will use any available tool 
to pull you away from God. You got to be sharp. You got to be ready. But if you can stick in there, honor God. I don't care what's going on. Honor God in the steps and in the processes. Follow his leading. You mess up, repent, move on. Keep going in God and watch what God does. Before you know it, your enemy will be coming going, can I help you? Did you need something? And you're looking at them like, no, I don't need nothing from you. No, no, yes, thank you so much. Thank you for your help. I appreciate you. Because I know the only way you're helping me is my God has touched you. Because I already know you don't like me. Jesus gives us this example, and I'm writing the scripture. He gives us the same example through how he interacted with Judas. He knew Judas, he knew what Judas was there for. He knew it, but he didn't treat him any differently. He treated him just like the rest of the disciples. We got to be the same where our hearts are so pure and so clean that the love of God flows through us even toward our enemies. Hallelujah. All right, five through 12. That's good, Deanna. Girl, you got me fired up. I'm fired up. Woo! All right, five through 12. Steph, you gonna have to go. You got a transition? Oh no, I'm just standing. Okay. Good. Five through okay. twelve. Who got that? I think it was you, Miss Siobhan, because of the you. names. Oh, that's me. Thank you, girl. I need help. Yep. See that? See that? Thank you. <laughs> See. All right. So the Jews finished off all their enemies with the sword, slaughtering them right and left, and did as they pleased to those who hated them. In the palace complex of Susa, the Jews massacred five hundred men. They also killed the ten sons of Haman, son of Amadatha, the ark arch enemy of the Jews. Then it gives us the name of his sons. Um, Parshandatha, Dalphin, Aspatha, Paratha, Adalia, Aradatha, Parmishta, Arisai, Aradai, and Vazatha. Vazatha. Did I say that right? Praise God. See, I ain't want y'all to have to Yes, that was good. But they took no plunder. That day, when it was all over, the number of those killed in the palace complex was given to the king. The king told Queen Esther, in the palace complex alone, here in Susa, the Jews have killed 500 men, plus Haman's 10 sons. Think of the killing that must have been done in the rest of the provinces. What else do you want? Name it, and it's yours. Your wish is my command. So in this, what stuck out to me is Haman made a decision. And this, this connected to me to generational um, fallout. You can make a choice that seems to be an immediate right now thing, and it impacts all, the, all of your children and your grandchildren and your great-grandchildren. Every generation is impacted by your choices that you're making right now. That's what this speaks to me. Haman made a decision to stand against the Jews, to stand against Mordecai, to not, not just that, to listen to his wife and his friends and put up this Gallo in the back of his house to kill Mordecai. Now he was already hung on the gallows in which he, he built, right? They killed him. The king put a, put a command for him to be killed on the, on the gallows. Now the Jews are like, kill all of his sons. Why do you think they killed all of his sons? Because they don't want him following in the footsteps of their his their daddy. They didn't want them to because look, a lot of times I find in the scripture when God would send um the, the Jews in to fight someone, he would say, kill everyone in some places. Because 
the generations that would follow would pick up, pick up the vengeance and try to come back after them to kill them. So they were like, uh-uh, we're going to wipe them all out. We're not dealing with this no more. This enemy, we're not going to see him no more. So they ended up killing him. Another practice that was put in place when you would have war is that the, the, the army that would win and overcome the other side, they would then take their plunder. Do y'all understand what that means? Take all their belongings. Take all of their possessions. But it was, it was really something because the scripture kept saying, but they took none of their plunder. They were not doing this for selfish gain. They were not doing this for their own ele elevation and advancement. They killed the men and they were out of there. And they could have, but they didn't take anything. And that's what it talks about when they say they, but they took no plunder. They didn't take anything from them. They didn't take anything from them. They just wanted to, um, really, God was doing a kingdom transfer and giving them, thank you, Lord God, the authority that he had already given to them. I said he, had, he was giving them the transfer of the authority that he had already given to them. God has already said that we are joint heirs with his son. He's already given us dominion on this earth. He's already given us a level of authority reigning in this earth. And then as we walk through the process of our lives, we get to a place where we're able to, he gives us enough strength to defeat and he gives us the authority to defeat our enemies. And we begin to walk in that power and that authority. But that happens once we understand who we are in God. We see that demonstrated here. God gave them position. He gave them an advocate through Queen Esther. He gave them a leader through Mordecai. And they were able to go before and petition the king. And the king stood up for them and backed them. And even after they had killed 500 men um, in the complex of Susa, he's still saying, what else do you want? Name it and it's yours. All right. Any questions or add-ins on, on um, 5 through 12? Any other insights you guys see? I have, I have just a question yep are you you're referring to um god's promise to abraham right to make him a seed of you know that jesus would come through the line of the jews so when you when you say he's god's already promised them right so yeah he's you're, already you're refer, you're, the abrahamic covenant that's what you're making reference to right well, there for us it's it's period he he promised them a savior. He promised them that he would be with them. He promised Abraham's seed that he was going to take care of that seed and he was going to put it out there. Man, God gave the Jews so many promises <laughs> just as he's done for us. Right. He told us if we suffer with him, we would reign with him. That's a promise. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So God has given us, even if we don't go all the way back to the Abrahamic promise and covenant, God has given us so many promises in his word that we are walking out now. But some of them, sometimes we get distracted or discouraged. I know for myself, there were moments that I got discouraged because I didn't really understand or believe who God said I was and how I was going to get to what he said I was supposed to get to. Many of us are walking in defeat and we are allowing our enemies to torture us and torment us. And we've embraced and accepted that we cannot move away from this enemy because we don't want, we, we have not yet accepted who God has already said that we were. 
The scripture says before you were even formed in your mother's womb, God knew you. That means he already declared something over you. He already said, this is who this person's going to be. He already knew he knows everything about our lives. It's taking us to learn God that we're able to start seeing what God has already put in place and spoken for our lives. It's not that God's back there trying to scramble and put stuff together for Siobhan. No, God already spoke what my life was going to be. He already spoke who I was. God knew that I was going to be teaching this Bible study before I was even an egg in my mama's belly. And he said that to me. He said, I knew that you would be mine, for real mine. Because he's God. He already knew that my heart was going to turn for him. He already knew that he had chosen me. He chose me first. Mm -hmm. He chose you. He chose each and every one of you before you could have ever thought of him. And he already knew what plan he had for you. Layla, the ideas that you're hearing now is because your heart is opening up to God and the possibilities of what he wants to do with you. They're not new ideas, though. God's been preparing you every step of the way for what he's calling you to do right now. He's been equipping you every experience, every conversation, every hiccup, every hurt, every pain, every enemy. He has been equipping you for what he planned to do with you. Don't y'all know God already knew if we were going to say yes to him or not? Why? Because he chose us. The Bible says he commanded his love toward us in that while we were still sinning, he sent his son to die. He didn't wait for you to get it right. It's a lie from the devil the, um, when people say, man, 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 you say, well, man, won't you follow God? Well, man, 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 I, I just got, I just got, I just got to get it right. Well, if you could get, could have gotten it right, then what did Jesus die for? We can't get it right without him. Amen. Hallelujah. I hope I answered your question. Glory Amen. to God. Yes, you did. <laughs> All right. 13. Who got us? 13 through what? Um, 19? I do. All right. 13 through 19. All right. Um, all right. Uh, if it pleases the king, Queen Esther responded, give the Jews of Susa permission to extend the terms of the order another day and have the bodies of Haman's 10 sons hanged in public display on the gallows. The king commanded it. The order was extended. The bodies of Haman's 10 sons were publicly hanged. The Jews in Susa went at it again. On the 14th day of Adar, they killed another 300 men in Susa, but again, they took no plunder. Meanwhile, in the rest of the king's provinces, the Jews had organized and defended themselves, freeing themselves from oppression. On the 13th day of the month of Adar, they killed 75,000 of those who hated them, but did not take any plunder. The next day, the 14th, they took it easy and celebrated with much food and laughter. But in Susa, since the Jews had banded together on both the 13th and 14th days, they made the 15th their holiday for laughing and feasting. This accounts for why Jews living out in the country in the rural villages remember the 14th day of Adar for celebration, their day for parties and the exchange of gifts. Yeah. All right. Tell me, what do, what do you get out of that? What do you see, Layla? So they kept trying and trying, but they didn't die. <laughs> um, who, who kept trying? Clarify for me. They, the Jews. I mean, the Jews tried to to keep killing them, but they didn't die. From my, is that correct? No, 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 no. The Jews mm. killed five hundred men first in Susa, right? Yes. Then the Jews kept going because Esther said, "Give us one more day to mm. to, to extend the terms of the order." What was the order that they could defend themselves? Oh, okay. So the king said, hey, it's granted to you. And she gave a second request. She said, now that the, now, now this is what I thought was interesting. She said, now that I know the sons of, of Haman are dead, 
But she said, now have the bodies of Haman's 10 sons hanged in public display on the gallows. Remember, up, up here, they, they told us they also killed the 10 sons of Haman. They were already dead. Right. But then she said, King, put them on public display on the gallows. Why do you think they wanted to do that? The men were already dead. Maybe to show, um, well, I know that's what, what Haman wanted of Mordecai to have his body um, like on display, but maybe it's just like the embarrassment or just to show like, I guess what, I don't know, I guess what could be done. It, it To me, it was the or show, it, says, it was the show, let me show you who my God is. Yeah. <laughs> let me show you who I'm with. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because they were in line to die, man. They were they were in line. Their lives were going to be over. Haman, yes, he was planning to publicly kill and humiliate uh, Mordecai. This was a huge sign to everybody of who the God of the Jews really was and his power. Because really, people thought that the Jews were weak because they weren't like everybody else. They had different practices. They didn't do and function and, and maneuver like the rest of all the other um, nations because God had given them different instructions, which is the same as us. As kings, as kings, kingdom citizens, God has given us different instructions and people should know who we are because of the love in our hearts, because we function differently than everyone else. But because of the love in our hearts, sometimes people will miscalculate and think that you're weak. And so to me, Esther's like, let me show you, my God is strong. This is not even about me. This is about my God. My God is strong. Once again, it speaks to me about that generational thing, man. I was wondering, like, what do y'all think? Because the scripture never talks about what his wife was doing. How do y'all think she felt right now? She encouraged her husband. And, and y'all, I'm telling y'all, like, I think that speaks to me more. Is like, be careful of what you are encouraging your husbands to do. Use your wifely powers for good. She encouraged that man to make that gallows and, and put Haman on it and go try to have dinner with the king and do all this stuff. And now she's having to eat what she created. And she's alone because she didn't just lose her husband. Now she's lost all of her children. She's probably lost her grandchildren because if, even if she didn't have any, now she won't have any. What do children represent? That is the heritage of, of people, of men. That's our inheritance is our babies. Mm -hmm. They've lost everything. Y'all remember when, Ma when um, Ruth said, call me Mara, <laughs> cause I am bitter. Like his wife should have been saying that yeah. because she lost everything at a miscalculation. She should have told her husband, hey man, don't, don't do that. Don't, don't do that. Don't do that. But she went along with it. Now everybody is. And then I think about what happened to her because the king gave Esther all of their estate. Right. Esther had his house, all of his belongings of Haman, all the belongings of Haman are now transferred to Esther by the king and Esther through her authority and influence gives it to Mordecai. 
And Heyman wasn't um, a slacker. He wasn't broke. To speak of his wealth, do y'all remember? Go back. When he wanted to kill Mordecai, he told the king, I will pay for it. Mm -hmm. Out of my own treasury, I'll pay for the death of Mordecai and the Jews. That's the speaker of the money he had. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. So now, here we, here we are. They're left with nothing to the point where she's not even mentioned. I thought that was interesting. Mm, yeah, that is. The Jews in Susa went at it again. On the 14th day of Adar, they killed another 300 men. But again, they took no plunder. Meanwhile, so now they've killed 800 men. Meanwhile, in the rest of the king's provinces, the Jews had organized and defended themselves, freeing themselves from oppression. On the 13th day of the month of Adar, they killed 75,000 of those who hated them. So Layla, what happened is they were, remember, this edict was in all of the provinces everywhere. The, the king had 127 provinces. This notice went out to everywhere. And on this day, the king was, the, the, the Jews were supposed to be killed. So in all of those provinces now that Esther has asked the king to change this over, now the Jews in every one of those provinces are defending themselves and killing people. Adar is around the month of February or March. This happened on the Jewish calendar. Adar is a is the name of the Jewish month, but in the um, American cal calendar or um, our country's calendar, it would be around February or March, the, the end of February, beginning of March, okay? So this time just passed where the Jews were celebrating this, okay? Um, the next day, the 14th, they took it easy and celebrated with much food and laughter. But in Susa, since the Jews had banded together on both the 13th and 14th days, they made the 15th day, the 15th, their holiday for laughing and feasting. This accounts for why Jews living out in the country in the rural villages remember the 14th day of Adar for celebration, their day of for parties and the exchange of gifts. It's called Purim. They celebrate, the celebration I think is called Purim. All right. And it's where they, um, yeah, the pure, the pure or of Purim. And it's where um, they celebrate, Purim means lot. So like Haman did, he, he casted the lot for the Jews to die. They then have a celebration where they celebrate the victory of overcoming their enemies, being able to defend against their enemies. Okay, who has 20? Am I reading that? I got 20. Oh, good, go ahead. Can you slide it down just, there you go. Thank sure. you so much. All right, Mordecai wrote all, the, all this down and sent copies to all the Jews in all King Xerxes provinces, regardless of distance, Carling for an annual celebration on the 14th and 15th days of Adar as the occasion when the Jews got relief from their enemies. The month in which their sorrow turned to joy, mm -hmm. mourning, somber salted into a holiday for parties and fun and laughter, descending and receiving of presents and of giving gifts to the poor. So, uh, 23. And they did it. What started then became a tradition, continuing the practice of what Mordecai had written to them. In 24 through 26, Haman, the son of Hamadatha, Hamadatha the Agagite, Agagite. The, mm -hmm. Agagite, the arch enemy of all the Jews, had schemed to destroy all the Jews, all Jews. He had cast the pure, the lot, to throw, to throw them into a panic and destroy them. But when Queen Esther intervened with the king, he gave 
written orders that the evil scheme that Haman had worked out should boomerang back on his own head. He and his sons were hanged on the gallows. That is why these days are called Purim from the word pure or lot. Mm -hmm. Any insights from there, um, Steph? I uh, I see a lot of Isaiah 61. You yeah, know, girl. The Lord in there. Um, turn the, you know, sorrow into joy, the mourning into dancing, throw off the garment of despair for garment of praise and the oak. Of, I mean, I love that um, part, but I, I see the uh, parallel right there. Yeah, um, I saw that too. Woo! So, that's so our good. that's our family's commissioning verse. God gave us that verse. He said, this is what I, I want you to do. <laughs> I prayed over my kids. Yeah. Of righteousness. Yeah. Yeah, but um, you see that. That's awesome. What else? Um, I love um the this I feel like they're stones of remembrance, you know. Um it, it screams, don't forget. You know, don't forget what God did for you. Um and again, that's that's consistent through scripture. God God is saying, remember, um, because we are forgetful people. So I, I really like that. Um, that part and again always God what man meant for evil God meant for good you know that boomerang um, effect there so great, yes. great for that Woo, that's good anybody else got anything else they want to add and I, I love that boomerang effect oh my gosh yeah. Lord we need some boomerang effect in our lives amen <laughs> Amen. That is so good. Yeah. But God's doing it, man. God's doing yeah. it. Yeah. All right. Amen. Um, I'm gonna pure, be listening. I'm gonna be in transition here. No worries. Pure or Purim is not something that God put in place for them to do. Mordecai actually wrote that out um for them to continue to, like she said, a stone of remembrance to remember that God um delivered them. Some of you need to get some stones of remembrance in your life. God's been doing some things for you. God's been doing some things, fighting some battles on your behalf. And every time you come up to the next battle, you don't remember. So you end up in that same place of doubt. You end up in that same place of, of fear and of anguish. Write these things down what God has done so that you'll be able to tell your children and your children's children about the God that saves, the God that turns things around, hallelujah. Um, 26, I'm gonna read, therefore, because of every, is this mine or was was um, Lucia, you, were you supposed to read or no? I'm sorry. No, I'm still at work. <laughs> okay, no worries, I got it, I got it. I just wanna make sure I didn't skip you, baby. I'm sorry. All right. It's okay. Therefore, because of everything written in this letter and because of all that they had been through, the Jews agreed to continue. It became a tradition for them, their children, and all future converts to remember these two days every year on the specified dates set down in the letter. These days are to be remembered and kept by every single generation, every last family, every province and city. These days of Purim must never be neglected among the Jews. The memory of them must never die out amongst their descendants. Queen, um, that, that's really, really good. It's what I was just saying. There are some things that you all need to pass down to your children. You need to sit down and talk to them and tell them how God helped, how God vindicated you, how God saved you, how God turned situations around on your behalf so they'll know. They will know. And it'll be in memory. Queen Esther, the daughter of Abihel, backed Mordecai, the Jew, using her full queenly authority in this second Purim letter to endorse and ratify what he wrote. Calming and reassuring letters went out to all the Jews throughout the 127 provinces of Xerxes, Xerxes kingdom to fix these days of Purim, their assigned place on the calendar. Dates set by Mordecai, the Jew what they had agreed to for themselves and their descendants regarding their fasting and mourning. Esther's word confirmed the tradition of Purim 
and was written in the book. That's something to have somebody back you up, huh? My God today, Lord, thank you for the backup plan coming. Thank you for sending people in authority to back us up and to fight with us. Hallelujah. I'm going to go ahead and read 10 because it's only three verses. King Xerxes imposed taxes from one end of his empire to the other. For the rest of it, King Xerxes' extensive accomplishments, along with a detailed account of the brilliance of Mordecai, whom the king had promoted. That's all written in the Chronicles of the Kings of Media and Persia. Mordecai the Jew ranked second in command to King Xerxes. He was popular among the Jews and greatly respected by them. He worked hard for the good of his people. He cared for the peace and prosperity of his race. Man, wouldn't you want that to be a good ending for your story? Like, man, I stood the test of times and God promoted me. God elevated me and advanced me. He saved me. And I put some things in place so that my people will know who God of the Bible is. Hallelujah. I believe that's why God has given us these opportunities to share and to study his word together, man, so that we will be equipped. We won't be alone. We will know how to fight, but we'll also know how to teach our children to fight. We'll know how to teach our grandchildren how to fight, our family members how to fight, and we'll teach them how to uphold the truths of the gospel. Hallelujah. Anybody got any other insights on the end of that? Glory to God. Man, this was such a powerful, powerful lesson in teaching. I got so much out of this. Um, I got so much out of this. Just how God honored Mordecai was just exceptional. Um, and I, I believe that we serve the same God, that he'll do the same for us if we would just stand the test of times and obey him, man. The scripture says, I have not, I have not seen, ear have not heard, neither has it entered into the heart of men what God has prepared for his people that love him. And I think that God wants to do something super special in each and every one of your lives and in my life. I do. Deanna, God got something special for you, girl. Like he really does. And you have not even seen half of what he wants to do. You haven't seen it. You don't even know how to process it because it's so beyond you. That's the thing about God-sized tasks. We can't even begin to think of how it would turn out because God has all the pieces and he has the plan and he just wants you to join him in that. Um, can we just take a moment and say, yes, Lord, I'll surrender to your plan for my life. Yes, Lord, I'll do it. Whatever it is you want me to do, God, just take a moment, lift your hand, say, yes, Lord, I'll do it. I might yes, be scared. Lord, I, I might not I'll understand it. it. I might not know what it's going to be, what's going to be the outcome of it, but we trust you, Lord. We trust, we trust you. We trust your plan. Hallelujah. We trust your plan. We trust your way. God. Glory to God. Layla, God's going to do it. God's going to do it. Lucia, God's going to do it. Don't look into tomorrow, next week. Just honor God and where you are right now. God's going to do it. Stephanie, God's going to do it. Amen. And we trust him that we're going to see what he said. Amen. Any other last words, comments, observations? This is so good. The parallel um, for Mordecai uh -huh. and Haman on... Um, Psalm 1, you know, you mentioned Psalm uh, 23 as well, but, um, you know, seeing God preparing a table in the presence of, you know, the enemies, but also like just in terms of character analysis, like Mordecai is blessed is the man that does not walk in the way of the wicked, right? Or stand yes. um, 
that as opposed to Haman is the chaff that it, the wind just blows. And I see that, you know, that it is very clear throughout Esther, just the, um, the Mordecai being um, blessed. And, you know, he's like the tree planted beside the, wa the waters, whatever he yes. does, prosper. That's so, so good. Yep. Thank you for that. Um, for those of you that don't know, it's Psalm 1. It says, how happy is the one who does not walk in the advice of the wicked. And that's what Haman did. Or stand in the pathway with sinners or sit in the company of mockers. Instead, his delight is in the Lord's instruction. That's Mordecai. And he meditates on it day and night. He is like a tree planted beside flowing streams that bears its fruit in its season and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever he does prospers. Yeah. Says the wicked are not like this. Instead, they are like chaff that the wind blows away. Therefore, the wicked will not stand up in the judgment nor sinners in the assembly of the righteous for the Lord watches over the way of the righteous but the way of the wicked leads to ruin. That's really good. Because that's that's the summary, right? <laughs> yeah. If you want to know the summary of Esther, that was it. Yeah. Thank you, Steph. That was sure, it. You're welcome. Yes. Glory I to God. You know that I know I love how you know the um the uh addresses to the scripture, as my friend says. I love that <laughs> because I know the scripture, I know the scripture in my heart. But I always forget like where exactly to find it. I have to go look it up. So I'm trying to get it. I'm trying to get there. Well, I will know it, like know exactly where it, where it comes from. So I appreciate that. Oh, yeah. It's all a part of God. the body. Yes, amen. All a part amen. of the body. Well, blessings to you all. We're going to close out in prayer. Are there any prayer requests um, tonight? Of course, I'm going to ask that we continue to play, pray for those that will be traveling here in July. Pray for um, India Ellis. She's a part of our group. I ask that you keep her in your prayers. Um, pray for, um, just pray for each other because there's so much going on in the lives of one another. So please, please, please don't take it for granted that everybody on here is okay. Don't take it for granted that things aren't going on. There are things that are going on beyond paying bills. There's things, real things going on, right? So please keep each other in prayer. And um, yeah, please keep each other in prayer. And I think that's everything on my side. Anybody else got anything to pray for? All right, amen. Stephanie, can you close us out in prayer tonight? I can. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I have this left. I'm gonna pull over in the parking lot and I'll pray. I'd love to. Uh, are you sure? Let's see. I want to. I can. You. Yes, because I can close us out. I'm just gonna pull into the parking spot right now. I. I'd love to pray for us. Oh, I appreciate you and your willingness. All oh, right. Awesome, awesome. We, we are, we're set. So let's, let's pray. Uh, dear Jesus, God, we just love you so much, Lord. And uh, wow, we know that you love us because you sent your son, Jesus, to die for us. God, mm -hmm. so we, just, we love you. We praise you. Bless your holy name, Father. We praise you. God, your word says, let everything that has breath, praise the Lord. So God, we praise you because you gave us breath in our lungs today, God. Yes, um, we are so grateful, God. This is the day that you made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it, God. Thank you so much uh, for our sisters, God, that so much for your word, God, that you gave us. Father, I thank you for how you lead us and you teach us and you guide us and you give us everything that we need to live this life out for you, God. God, and thank you so much uh, for Siobhan, God. Thank you that uh, for her boldness to step out and to 
to teach us from your word, God, faithfully week after week after week. Mm -hmm. God, um, God, just bless that faithfulness, Father. Bless her family, God. Mm -hmm. Thank you for giving her wisdom. Thank you for giving her words, God. Um, just bless that sacrifice of time, God. And I lift up all of us, God, who are here, who are listening, God, and mm -hmm. um, all of our sisters, God, we just lay those burdens at your feet. God, thank you that we can cast our cares to you, Jesus, because you care for us, Father. Mm -hmm. That uh, you, you, you are right there, Jesus, at the throne of your Father on is crying out to him on our behalf, God, and thank you so much that we can boldly approach your throne, God, and just, we pray, we lift up our, our sister India to you, Father God, you see her, you hold, hold her tears in your hands, God, you love her, God, I just pray that you are, I know, God, I thank you that you are with her right now, that you are comforting her, that you are beside her, God, let her know how much you love her, and I Thank you so much, bro. Thank you, Jesus. Dad, and um, thank you just for, for the lessons, Father, that you taught us through Esther. Yes. That help us to live this, this life out of humility, Father, of loving our enemies, loving the people who are, who are just so different from us and who may love us the wrong way. God, you say no. You know, be gentle. Be yes. humble, God. Um, mm -hmm. Like you, Father. Uh, help us to live this out, God. Um, help us to be like the tree planted by streams of water. God, let our roots go deep in you, Jesus. Thanks, Lord. Um, Lord, and uh, just thank, again, thank you for our Bible study, God. Thank you for this time. And we lift all of these these cares up to you. You know what they are, Jesus. And we praise you for what you're going to do, God. We are just so excited um, to see you work, to see you move, God. And I just pray you bring each person who is listening right now to the women's conference in July, yes. God, that we may not just be together in Zoom, God, but we will be together physically, God, and we can mm -hmm. worship you together as one, God, that we can learn together from you, Father, um, and that we will just rejoice together. Bring us all, Jesus. Bring us all to the conference in yes, July. Lord. Make it happen, Jesus. Father. We so look forward. You can do it immeasurably more than we can ever ask, dream, or imagine. And I believe we will see the goodness of the Lord in the yes, land Lord. of the living, Father, Lord. for Lord. your glory, Jesus. We love you, Father. We lift your name on high. Jesus. Glory to your name, Jesus. Glory to your name, Lord. Hallelujah. Pray all of this in your holy name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. You guys have a Amen. wonderful, wonderful week. Remember the teachings of Esther. Remember the teachings of Ruth. Don't let the enemy pluck it out of your heart. I pray that the soul of Amen. the Lord is ready and prepared and that God will begin to grow beautiful flowers in the gardens of your heart. Man. We're going to keep going, y'all. Yeah. We're going to pray. Pray that God leads us into the next thing we're supposed to study and in the next yeah. steps of what he wants to teach us. And um, yeah, we're going to do it. Same time, same place next week. I love y'all. All right. Love you, Siobhan. Love you guys. Bye. Thank you. Bye.